Okay, well, first of all, uh, thank you for the ride today, Wade. Um, I first was a little scared, but uh, I liked the straightaway, but the curves were a little, <laughs> little frightening. Good brakes on that car. Incredible brakes, incredible brakes. How did you, it, both of you, how did you, you didn't wake up one day as kids and decide we want to be in stunts, or did you? No, I, I woke up wanting to be a racing driver. Um, and that was uh, a bit of a stretch and a bit of a dream. So I took the next best thing, which is uh, honestly, all I want to do is be, to be paid to drive cars as a job, um, fast and dangerously. So um, the racing was quite a, qu quite a hard thing to get into. So stunts was like, you know, you can roll a car and get paid or you can, you know, do a car chase. So that was, I sort of pursued that and uh, didn't give up on that until someone let me do it. And what got you into that? Were you into that as a, as a child? Yeah, about 19, I was, um, I was doing SE Rescue in South Africa along the beaches and a film came to town. I'd been hustling with film companies. It was a smaller industry in South Africa. And then they came to town and asked me if I'd jump out of a helicopter into this river with a, there was a crocodile. And it was a B movie, so there was not high safety standards back in the day. <laughs> <clears throat> and um, I did that and just loved the adrenaline and the rush it gave. And then um, they asked if I'd crash a car in the sugarcane fields and roll it over in a ditch. And I was like, sure. And it was just a lot of common sense. and just sort of really got into it and pushed my way and uh, learned on all these really sort of bad B-movies, but on, it wasn't about the acting on those movies, all about the stunts. So we would just do loads of stunts. Like we were doing stunts every day, high falls and car crashes and explosions. And that was a great sort of training ground. And I did that for several years before I moved on to bigger films and could apply the, you know, what I'd learned to the bigger sort of budget films. Uh -huh. How about you? Um, I, a bit like Wade, I, I woke up and wanted to be a racing driver. But yeah, motorbike, motorbike racing. Um, and I just cha I kind of ch changed that dream completely. So right from novice up to British Championship level. And then luckily enough for me, Wade, Wade asked me to audition for Rogue Nation. I and, stole her from yeah. the racing world. Uh -huh. yeah. But Wade was 19. <laughs> How old were you when you first wanted to do tomboy stuff, so to speak? Oh, I've always been a tomboy, so right from an early age, I was, I've been jumping off sheds and climbing trees and all sorts of things. So I was always into my cars and my bikes and luckily. Chasing. And what would you say are your three favorite movie experiences in your, that you've ever done? Hmm. Or maybe let's just narrow it down because we don't have, have that much time to your, your one favorite movie experience. I've got to say Fallout probably because it was the latest and we pushed the envelope that much more. And it was so much pressure after Rogue Nation to what are you going to do next to make it better than Rogue Nation because we did so much on that. Uh -huh. um, and I just had a lot of fun, you know, a lot of stuff in Fallout, like I'm a helicopter pilot and I'm, you know, so Tom and I always did stuff like that together away from work, like chopper flying and, and racing and stuff. So being able to put that into a movie um, and at the level that we did it with Tom doing it was great. It was a real experience to see him flying in the mountains of New Zealand where I learned to fly a helicopter and in the same canyons, but filming a Mission Impossible movie. And, at the level he did it. So I've got to say Fallout, because we did a lot of stuff, like the drop, dropping Tom from the, the helicopter into the net. I mean, that was a major stunt to do that practically with no CG, a couple of thousand foot in the air, um, dropping Tom for real down that line, you know, with the, with the mountains of New Zealand where I learned as a young helicopter pilot student flying safely, I'm dropping Tom Cruise. I mean, there was, there was moments, there's so many moments in that film that make that my favorite. It's part of the reason why it was fun is because Tom actually enjoys that kind of stuff. Yeah, he, you know, working it out is fun, like being challenged. Uh -huh. Like, how the hell am I going to drop him and lose this much rope in a, a helicopter whilst flying? How am I going to fit two riggers and myself in a helicopter whilst flying and have Tom? So we had to build all these structures and weight and balance with the CAA and, the, you know, all the you know, aeronautical um, federations and stuff to make sure that we could do it. Now, that logistical nightmare to me is a great challenge. It's like anything, like racing, everything that's a challenge is mm -hmm. um, so rewarding when you pull it off. Um, and, and doing it in that beautiful location and with everything and having the streets of Paris given to us for the car, boat, bike, truck chase that we did. You know, just getting all the logistics worked out and actually getting to that day, the Arc de Triomphe, being able to pull it off is hugely rewarding when you put uh, so much work and rehearsal and into it. And, Without Tom doing it, we couldn't, we couldn't have sub the subjective experience that the audience has got. It would be very much an objective experience, and it takes you out of the movie. Uh, the fact that Tom does it all, we're not cutting to a stunt double, we're not coming around him on a clever shot and doing a morph, or we're not cutting to a wide shot with a stunt double doing it back into Tom, like, uh, just doing the landing. It's all Tom. 
So the camera angles, it, it allows you to do so much more with a camera, stay with them longer and do so much more that the, and the audiences are so sharp these days. They, editing on their iPhones and things, you know, they, they're so sharp that they know, they know when they're being cheated and they're looking for the cut, they're waiting for the, where's the, where's the stitch, where's this, there isn't one, because it's all Tom. Yeah. I think we're, we're uh, running out of time, but uh, one thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, you've done uh, stunt work and stunt coordination. Which do you prefer and why? First stunt work, because I'm more nervous watching someone else do something always, whereas I trust myself doing it, and there's also way less stress. Way less pressure, no meetings, no studio meetings. I just pitch up with my bag, put my pads on and crash something. It's definitely, I, I prefer it in some ways, but in other ways I like creating, you know, for me as a young kid that grew up in South Africa on the beach and, you know, with all these useless qualifications and, you know, to be able to look at a movie like Mission Impossible and think that, you know, I invented that or created that and it's on the big screen and it's being appreciated with, with my team. It's, it's, it's a hell of a thing and I'll never get, it never gets boring or never gets old. So I think the I knowledge you, you pass to your team as well is massively helpful. Yeah, I think being a performer is important. It's like a lot of people become coordinators after not performing a lot. Um, right place, right time, right contacts, whatever it is. Um, but if you actually haven't done a lot of the stunts yourself, it's very hard to, to know what it feels like to be in that on that motorbike in, in that heat or in that environment or be in a harness hanging upside down from a single point and I can't physically turn my body that way because the pick's here, maybe we should move the pick and all those little things and I think if you've been a, a performer and performed in a lot of different stunts, you make a much better coordinator because you can not only sympathize but you can help adjust and, and make it more comfortable, make it better and, and just, make it, make it, just make it much bigger and better. You know, without uh, beating on the on the people that are working their ass off and not, <laughs> it's not it's not happening for some reason. So I think doing the time, doing the performing time before becoming a coordinator is vitally important. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, eh?